welcome to part 5 in this video series, Using the Solenoid Control AOI. In this video series, we're going to be introducing the Solenoid Control AOI. We'll also be importing the Solenoid Control AOI into the PLC project. Then we will learn how to configure the AOI to use it to control solenoid valves on the right side of the COM module. We will also explain some of the structure that the AOI creates in the PLC that makes it user friendly to access. Finally, we will discuss some of the troubleshooting options that are available when using the solenoid control AOI. So let's get started using the solenoid control AOI. If you've been following along with this video series, we've been using this sample program called Mac. We're going to go ahead and follow the same process of importing the add-on instruction as we did the config modules AOI earlier by right-clicking on add-on instructions and selecting import add-on instruction. Here we will select the solenoid control version 2.2 from the zip file that we downloaded from the Mac website. Let's go ahead and select import. The import configuration panel tells us that the version that we're importing and the name of the vendor to make sure and confirm that we're importing the proper AOI. Once the AOI is imported, we will need to create a new rung for it. We can drag and drop the AOI onto the rung here to create an instance of it. If we're not familiar with the settings that we need to configure for the front panel of the solenoid control, we can refer to the manual that's provided as a PDF file, the Fieldbus Manifold Ethernet IP Software Manual version 4.1. Inside here there is always a table that describes the parameter type and data type configuration that's required for each of the input or output instances. For example, if we're setting up a tag name for the reset fault, such as PB for push button, we will need to make sure that this is a boolean type. Here we see that the fault last message requires a string type, for example. We will be setting up the tags inputs here and also learning about the output status bits over here. These will be talked about and demonstrated later in the video series. Okay, let's go ahead and configure the solenoid control AOI. And just like the config module AOI, we need to create a tag name that is in reference to this instance of this solenoid control block. So just as before, we're going to use the station 1 example as if we had multiple valve stacks. This is the station 1 solenoid control. So we'll go ahead and give it that particular name for a tag, station 1 solenoid control AOI. And as always with Alan Bradley, we want to right click on this and select new station control. And this creates the tag name with this proper instance data type. Let's hit create. The next two tags are just like the config module AOI, only we do not need to reference the config target. We only need to tell the solenoid control where the input data is and output data. Since we already have it configured up here, we can click with the mouse and hold the left mouse button down and drag and drop it to the pro appropriate input and output to copy the tag from one block to another. The config tag name is fairly important. You'll want to use a short name here as this is how we're going to be referencing solenoids in our project. And because we're using the concept of this is station one, it might be a good idea to just give the config tag name that particular tag name as well for station 1. We'll go ahead and right click on this to create a new station 1 tag and this creates it as the UDT of MIO67 solenoid config. What is a UDT? A UDT stands for user defined type. When we created and imported, when we create this tag, it creates and utilizes the UDT structure that was imported with the AOI. So by importing this AOI, it also imported two UDT structures that are in reference to this solenoid control. As we import other AOIs, 
other UDT structures may be added to the user-defined data types. If we double-click on the solenoid config, we can see that this is the structure of how the tag name is associated. We also have a UDT structure that holds the solenoid type. So let's return back to the logic routine. The next thing that we need to configure is a reset fault. As in the manual you saw previously, we could call this PB for push button reset fault, for example. This is going to be a toggle bit or a boolean that will be created. So if this particular block faults, you can toggle this reset fault tag, which will then attempt to reset the block to continue operation. The last fault message will be a string tag that needs to be created. We'll go ahead and start to name this station one fault last message and we'll create that tag by right clicking on it which then creates it as a string reference and last but not least is the fault count so again we're going to use the reference station one fault total count this will create an integer value or in this case a double int that will store the total fault count that has been logged if there are multiple faults in the solenoid control AOI. Once we've created all of the input parameters, the rung is no longer an error and we may now attempt to try to download it into the PLC. Let's go ahead and do that now by selecting communication and download. If you'll notice, we do not have any kind of instruction in front of this AOI. The solenoid control AOI is meant to run continuously on a rung that does not have any kind of instruction interruption in front of it. This AOI runs continuously and monitors the valve stack and reports any valve stack faults or statuses continuously while your ladder logic is executing. Now that the solenoid control is active in the PLC, let's go and see how it operates. If you remember previously, we went into the controller tags and in order to control or operate a solenoid, we went into the Ethernet IP tag valves.o.data and we were able to toggle the appropriate solenoid valve here by selecting word 2 bit 0. If we attempt to do that now and we try to write a 1 in there, it automatically gets changed to a 0. And the reason for this is because now that we've installed the solenoid control AOI, that AOI now owns all of these outputs from word 2 to word 5. And so you will not be able to reference the solenoid control by using the Ethernet IP name structure any longer. The new way to reference it, reference the solenoids will be by the config tag name that we gave. And if you remember, we gave it a, a tag name of station 1. So if we expand that tag name, we now see a naming convention that makes a little bit more user-friendly use of how to identify and control a solenoid valve that's attached to the COM module to the right. Here we can see that up to 32 solenoid valves have been set up with different tag names that are referenced by the config tag name that was configured. So in order to turn on the solenoid for, for station one, we will need to reference it here in this tag. Since we have no ladder logic, we can go ahead and expand this option and see the structure that is inside station1.solenoid1. Here we can see that there are five different types of options. They can either be input or output. In this particular case, in order to turn the solenoid output on, we'll want to put a one into the output status. We'll notice that the valve does respond by turning the solenoid 1 output on and then also confirms by, out, by turning on a status bit to confirm that the output has been mirrored. We'll also notice that there are faults indicators depending on how the valve stack is configured. For instance, if there is a valve short, this particular valve fault coil short will be a 1 if there is a problem with the valve if we try to turn the output on. Solenoids can be controlled with an integer value access. Down below we have integer values that are double integers that 
mimic all of the outputs, mirror output, or fault statuses from each of the solenoids. So not only can you turn solenoid one on up here with a boolean, you can also turn on solenoid one down below by an integer register by writing an integer value or expanding the integer word out to access the bit level. Bit zero is solenoid one, the same as the, the boolean value above. So if we write a one into this, reg into this bit, we turn that solenoid one on. We can also turn multiple solenoids on by writing an integer value into the integer of solenoid output all. This turns on two outputs at the simultaneously because this is the binary representation of six in boolean down below. By utilizing the double int value we can see the status of the output equals six and the output mirror equals six. This indicates that the valve is operating properly when it echoes the mirror output. What's more advantageous is the faults. The fault coil short and fault coil open, anything greater than zero indicates that there's a fault on one of 32 solenoids. Let's take a look at an example of using the solenoid control AOI. For example, if we are controlling an air cylinder that has an extended and retracted position, we can assume that we are using solenoid 1 as the ex extended solenoid as solenoid A, and possibly solenoid 2 as the retracted. Let's create some ladder logic to operate our fictional air cylinder. In this particular case, we're going to be controlling two solenoid valves and we'll need a toggle bit to toggle between the two bits with an examine if on and an examine if off instruction bit. Let's call our tag name here extended cylinder or extend cylinder. So when we toggle this bit on we can then control one of the solenoid valves here on the right and since we want the condition of extend cylinder to be off we can just right click and drag and drop the opposite logic here on this examine if off instruction here. In order to reference the station one solenoid control, we're going to use the config tag name that we created station one. We can begin to type station one in the output coil here and then use the arrow to select and expand the tag name. Here we can select solenoid one and expand the dot o output instruction. This will give us access to control the output of solenoid 1. We can then do the same thing by referencing solenoid 2 here by beginning to type station 1 and expanding the tag name to solenoid 2 and then selecting a dot O for output. We now have some basic logic here to extend an air cylinder and retract an air cylinder based on the status of this toggle bit. We'll go ahead and download that into the project. We can now right click on this tag name and toggle it. We see that the solenoid one or A valve for this double valve has fired on which extends our air cylinder. We then can toggle this bit off which then turns off solenoid one and turns on solenoid two which is the B side cylinder that would retract our virtual air cylinder. So this is one of many examples that we can do with the solenoid control. So next let's take a look at one of the examples of how the fault coil short works. We've artificially created a coil short on solenoid one. So since we have ladder logic here to extend the air cylinder, let's go ahead and toggle this bit. When we toggle this bit, since we've created a, fault, a coil short condition, we have basically now illuminated the output solenoid fault and the type of fault that's been detected. A fault coil short has been indicated. This is a resettable fault, so if we turn off the solenoid one output, we can then use the push button reset fault to try to clear the error. If we create this fault once again, we can then go into the controller tags to see what some of the statuses are in the 
word structure here. We have we can now see the value of using the D int structure of the station one fault coil shorted all. We can see that there is a value of one. This indicates that one of the solenoids is shorted. We can then expand this tag out to see which solenoid has been shorted. Here, since bit zero is solenoid one, we see that once flag number one is set. We should also be able to see that in the Boolean structure up here by station one, solenoid one. And we can see that the fault coil short flag is now turned on. And that concludes this video series of using the solenoid control AOI.